bundled up, Reuben. Well, it's a little windy here on the east coast of Patagonia. It is very windy, and we are actually here looking at penguins. Penguinos. So if you want to see more penguins, follow along. Keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> visited Puerto Madryn on the east coast of Patagonia as a jumping off point for many different opportunities. Uh, it is a very popular beach coastal town where people love to have fun and party on the beach. The city is a great jumping off point for natural preserves where you can view wildlife like this guy. <laughs> Toti. 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 Say hi to our audience, you're on YouTube. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Punta Loma is home to the only permanent colony of South American sea lions. We'll talk more about these cute critters later in our zoology section. To get there, you could take a taxi or a tour, but we chose to rent bikes. Uh, it was a very long way along a road through the desert, um, but you do get beautiful views of the coast. However, the road gets pretty tricky and it's a 30 kilometer round trip bike ride, so keep that in mind. Luckily, our new friend Tati made us some coffee to refresh ourselves midway. But there are also lots of beaches along the way that you can stop and take a dip, like we did. It was a little gross though. <laughs> the most bang for your buck is probably the Valdez Peninsula, where we saw the most diverse wildlife. Uh, it starts with a visit to the museum and visitor center. And then you basically drive uh, very slowly around this kind of terrain, the desert of Patagonia on dirt, gravel, washboard roads. Uh, it's really nice once you're out there though, you can do some hiking, and of course there's all lots of wildlife that you can see, which we're going to talk more about later. The predominant wildlife that you will see in Valdez Peninsula are seals, like these elephant seals here, uh, and as well as pinguinos, which I promise you'll see more of later. And if you're really interested in penguins, then you've got to go to Punta Tombo. It's a very long way to go, but there are just thousands of little Magellanic penguins everywhere. While most of Eastern Patagonia is desert, Ushuaia is the tip of the Andes and they call themselves the end of the world. It is a cute mountain town with lots of stores and art around where you can kind of just chill. It's also the home base for most Antarctic cruises. There are a couple of history museums in town worth visiting for sure, uh, such as this one with uh, a little bit of information about uh, the governors and, and the way the town used to run back in the day. Uh, also, Ushuaia was formed as a penal colony uh, by the Argentines, and so you can visit the old prison where they have converted all the old cells into a really interesting smattering of uh, historical facts. Penguins. While Puerto Madryn is a kicking off point for uh, wildlife viewing, uh, Ushuaia is a great place to kick off outdoor adventures like this Marshall Glacier hike, which is very popular uh, and fairly easy to do and quite beautiful. Another must do is a visit to the Tierra del Fuego National Park. We chose to take the train to the end of the world, uh, which is an old prison train that used to take the prisoners out to do logging. You can see here it's a little cheesy, um, but it was really fun and delightful. There's an audio guide that kind of gives you some history and there's wild horses and you can see a waterfall. It's a really neat experience. So we took a train to the National Park thinking it would take us to, well, the National Park, but it kind of just drops us off in the middle of nowhere. And I guess I didn't do my research well enough because I'm not really sure where we're supposed to go uh, or we'll how to get to the trails. Yeah, but we only have a day. Don't worry, we figured it out. 
uh, we uh, went down this road <laughs> to actually a post office uh, there on that um, pier is a post office so uh, it's just really pretty uh, and we got to send home some postcards mm. What really worked out perfectly was from the post office you can hike the coastal trail uh, with beautiful views of the Beagle Channel and it was just, oh, just fantastic. So we got on a train, we didn't know our plan, but we ended up on an awesome trail and then it put us out at the visitor center where a lovely ranger gave us a really good plan too. So we're gonna walk to the very furthest part of the transatlantic highway. <laughs> That's kind of exciting. That's south. <laughs> south, yes. As far as you can go. Yes. <laughs> Ruben here doesn't know the end of the road song by Boys to Men and he refuses to sing it with me. So just imagine that we're singing that song. I'm not gonna sing it by myself. <laughs> One of the favorite things that we did was a day trip to Gable Island. Uh, so Canal Fun Tours takes you out to the Haberton Estancia, which is actually the former home, uh, the original home of Thomas Bridges, the missionary founder of Ushuaia. So we get on a Zodiac boat, they give us some directions, and we got to kind of drive around the Beagle Channel, and of course visit penguins. Mm -hmm. Then on to the island itself, which is a uninhabited island that we hiked across with a group. It was a, just a really lovely day. They fed us, they gave us little snacks and coffee. We just really had a great time. The hike ends at a little refugio with food and wine, which we thoroughly enjoyed before we took uh, some rafts out uh, into the water and had a little fun. Magellanic penguins, known for their striations, actually come to Patagonia to mate. Uh, they have a very well-formed colonies and they uh, will come back and mate with the same penguin for life. Very fortunate to be here during the hatching season. Uh, the young will stay in the little nests underground until they're ready to come out, uh, where they will learn from their mommies and their daddies. Eventually, they start to figure things out on their own. They start to venture around, take a look, see what's out there. And here's a little puberty penguin. So his fluff is starting to come off so that he can become waterproof and eventually get into the water. He's ready. <laughs> Then as young adults, they don't have their striations quite all the way. Here's a little guy learning how to swim now that he's lost his fluff. You go, you go. Oh, look at you. Then like any other teenagers, they hang out in gangs, waddle around. <laughs> Penguins are very fast in the water where they feed, uh, but during this time when they've got uh, young ones, they have to go back and forth between the water and their nests in order to feed their babies. And they're a little bit slower on land, but they're so cute. But honestly, most of them just kind of did this. <laughs> South American sea lions also live in colonies, uh, usually with one like male that has a harem of females. Uh, the, the young males that don't have a harem hang out on their own, but they're a little territorial. As you can see, the males have this mane, uh, just kind of like a lion. However, in Spanish, they are called lobos, which is actually the word for wolf. So wolf or lion is uh, how they are known. This guy's got a lot of ladies. 
Southern elephant seals are the largest species of seal in the world. These are just babies. They're maybe three months old and they're laying around to save up energy before they have to go out uh, and migrate back to Antarctica. We also saw lots of guanaco or llamas. They are everywhere. They're also quite delicious. <laughs> They're friendly with penguins and uh, also with humans. <laughs> Oh, so many birds to see as well, like the sorrel, Patagonia. This Magellanic woodpecker. The ever-present Chimango. Looks like a hawk, but it's not. And these Cockwains, who have also been breeding. And Comrades, that's for you, Mom. Pasta with shrimps and some um, pasta squid. And uh, this looks like it's going to be delicious. It's like avocado and sh uh, prawns. Anyway, some guy on the street told us like randomly to just. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got there? Some Milanese. Napoleon. Napolitana. Yeah, she And at me. Uh, frita, fritos con huevos. Noise. What was that for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very traditional Milanese con ensalada. Mmm, piccata. Piccata is like a, kind of just a lot of traditional meats and uh, little snacks. We're also enjoying it with some Argentinian uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. Sometimes this is the only size of eggs they sell. Ruben, the chef. Shrimp. Caesars. Yes, please. That's all on video. <laughs> what do you what what are you dragging around all over these countries, Ruben? Well, it, no, I pick it up in the countries. I've got mayonnaise and salsa golf and cheddar cheese. Yeah, I think you still have stuff in there from the Pacific Crest Trail, though, don't you? Uh, no. Uh, look, I also picked up some yerba mate tea bags. <laughs> he's a little, he's a little hoarder. He's like, oh, that's free. It's on a table. It's mine. It's not hoarding. It's using it for the future. It's planning. Did you get your penguin fix yet? I think so. Are you sure? I don't know. Maybe. A Different I, kind? Maybe a different color penguin. I, I, I would be more interested. More like pink and purple with um, zebra stripes? Yeah. Okay. Maybe that one with the little cool haircut. Well, thanks for joining us in... East Coast Patagonia. Yeah. We hope that you learned a lot about animals and uh, animals. Right. And if you have any specific questions about our itineraries with hyperlinks, please always check out our blog and join us next week in... Patagonia. Southwest Patagonia. We're going to be in Patagonia for a while. Also, ask us questions down below in the comments. Yeah, we, like questions. we would love to hear from you.